you they're still being made today at the address we gave earlier for the book exactly. on Hieronymus. And um, um, one of the other things is uh, this this type of equipment was well documented in a series of books by David Tansley. Who Here, also died last year, <laughs> the year that many radionicists died. died. To be in the, the in crowd, everybody was dying last year. Um, Here's uh, one of his better books, in my estimation, called Radionics, Science or Magic, where he talks about what is radionics. He really gets into the question of why this hasn't been um, accepted by modern science and, uh, and how that's related to whether or not it works right. and, uh, and so on. Um, these have been bestsellers in the radionics uh, uh, name list for s many, many years now, at least over 10 years. Yeah, I wanted to um, also, just as an anecdotal input here, while we're talking about the British uh, school, here's some pictures from Murray Denning's book in My Search for Radionic Truths, and he shows some instruments in here that really aren't known anywhere else. And uh, Now, these seem to be... Sh sh Basically, These were created by a man named Daryl Butcher, and they basically worked on spirals, and he was working towards automatic instruments, so I'm not truly sure how they operated. He's more documenting their existence here, rather than really showing how they were developed. And we see on this curved piece, there's a carving in it, and the carving here is more plainly seen. Here, it's a... Uh, Looks somewhat logarithmic. Not really sure, but here's another meter. And these are various. These things spun on some type of axes. And he made a board called the Peggotty board, where he would move pieces around. And here's a Peggotty board that had a little spinning thing. And Denning talks about how he would go out the room and look in the window to see if it was turning, and it still would be. So apparently, this was worked towards automatic radionics in England. This is a very little known aspect of the British Radionics School. And here's one called the Straw Hat, spun around and had different witness cards on it also. So there's not very much technical data in this book, but in uh, just a few pages in Murray's uh, book, he does document that those existed. So it's, from a historical standpoint, I thought it was good to mention. Mm -hmm. So basically, what, what we've seen so far is a an idea here which started that there are certain subtle emanations coming from the human body which can be detected in a number of ways that they you can develop devices to help eliminate all the other tunings and focus uh, one particular type of emanation through a through a type of circuitry that we can use to isolate it from all the others and then detect it in some way and, and interact with it in another way uh, for treatment. One, the detecting of it is what we would call the analysis, the interacting with it hopefully in a beneficial way we would call a treatment, and that this was the basic radionic mode. What we found over the years is that a number of different types of circuitry, and finally uh, the the development of no circuitry at all was um, has evolved. It started with a sequence of, of resistances. It moved to um, uh, sequence of, of variable capacitances, and then moved entirely to what we'll call um, a, a sequences of symbols. Right. There's no power in this instrument. No battery. No nothing. Right. The switches. It just they, they just connect, you know, a plate that's standing in front of this with the rest of the circuit. So these are all very passive situations. Right. And now radionics, you know, deals with radiations. And in modern days, a lot of people go towards an explanation which is termed psychotronics, which implies that it's the intent of the operator. Now, an article that Trevor Constable wrote for the journal in... 1961 or 1962 on the Ruth Drown system, he points out how essential it is to keep for the operator to not project thought forms into the equipment 
because at our state of human development it can alter the outcome and that the drown system specifically in his article works with the radiations and the thought process is kept out so that the psychotronic explanations that are going around today well they are valid and you can manipulate these instruments with the thought process that's not the primary use of them and it wasn't how it was primarily developed and in essence should be kept out of it because when you're dealing with when you get to the structure you're still not imprinting your mind on it you're dealing with a specific energy that's coming from the structure mm -hmm. So far we've gone through the historical development of the various devices that have been used to detect uh, emanations from human beings, which is basically the study of radionics. We've also seen some of the devices that have been used for broadcasting for agricultural use. Basically this whole field of the subtle detection and interaction of subtle emanations in the living energy fields around light uh, humans and plants uh, dates back uh, many many thousands of years and before the advent of the development of the devices which were used for tuning there were a wide variety of what we'll call detection devices that um, were used throughout the the many ages. We've seen how uh, radionics started with a, uh, a rubbing plate method and also incorporated later uh, the use of the pendulum. But the pendulum isn't the only thing that has been classically used over the ages for subtle detection. We've had a number of other major developments. But for instance, this is what you could consider a basic pendulum. It's some shape, some form of material hanging on, on a chain or a, or a wire that will swing in a certain motion. There have also been... Basically what it does too when it swings is pendulum itself isn't swinging independently of the hand, it's actually an amplifier of the hand's subtle motions and reactions to external radiations coming in, whether it be from plant, animal, or mineral. Or thought, or emotion. So basically what this is used as is an external indicator of what the person operating it is actually picking up from his environment. Oftentimes, the person who uses a detection uh, device like a pendulum doesn't give themselves permission to know directly what the information that's impinging upon them really is, which would be simply called intuition or realization. So that these subtle methods were developed over the ages to give people permission to know what they shouldn't have been able to know. Here's a couple publications of the many publications we make available to researchers. This here is a dowsing dictionary by Janice Bayless and Adrian Bartlow. And this is really an excellent book for the beginner or the expert. Um, it's basically a dictionary of dowsing. And it's available through Borderland and I believe American Society of Dowsers and many other sources. Um, a lot of bookstores, Sun Man Moon, Huntington Beach, California. So that's a good one. Any dowser should have that on their shelf. Just to they find something they can't uh, remember, they can look it up. Here's one published by Health Research, Elementary Radiesthesia and the Use of the Pendulum, which radiesthesia is the general science of detection through pendulum and related uh, types of objects. The pendulum's not only swinging, but as we see, there'll be um, not just uh, the vertical, but there's also horizontal variations of it. It's developed by Vern Cameron and Swingrod.